when mechanized mining was going on in Plateau State, there were flow of funds, there were opportunities. Over 80,000 people were working in the mine. Even if you are not coming for your white collar, you are sure that even as a laborer, you're going to get work. And even now that the mining is in the hands of artisans every day, they are sure that when they go out, they will get money from. And people who are not directly involved in mining, and like the likes of Nesso, the likes of NASCO and other companies, the Swan companies were excelling. Now that the mining is in the hands of the info, is only in the hand of informal miners. I went to one mining site in Kokop. For those that know plastic area, I went to, I was in a site in Kuru, Kokop. In that particular site, every day, the least they boast of miners in the site is 1,500 miners. And while I was going, the Okada men that when you go there, if you are going early in the morning, there's a junction at that Genta. You see, like oh, more than 100 Okada men waiting to carry people to the mines. Also, in the evening, once it is six o'clock, the same Okada men, you see over 100 Okada men waiting to carry people back. So while I was interviewing some of them, he told me on an average every day, he's sure of nothing less than 5,000 naira on an average. And if you look at it compared to the, the minimum wage, of Nigeria, they are not doing bad. So it has helped people who are not even involved in the mining activity. And also in the mining site, then the informal external mining site, it is, you will see those people in charge of food, the ones selling drugs, even the ones selling trades, other commodities. So it has helped, like I said, women empowerment. This mining thing has really helped women. You will see women that are really helping their families. Like I was talking to a woman, she told me that her children are graduate, although they don't train their children to be geoscientists or mining engineers to help them. <laughs> but I think she told me that she was able to raise some of them as a result of the mining she's doing. And to the government, it has helped generate revenue. For the former sector, for the former teen mining sectors in Jaws, they are able to raise uh, corporate income tax, the education tax, the value added tax, and, and royalty. All these are what the federal government they, they enjoy. And for the state government, they said they get their payee, the whole tax. But for the informal sector, while I went to some of the, the while I was discussing with some of the village head, they told me that when it comes to the development of the community, these miners, they come and they donate more towards community development, that they have really helped them in taking care of their community, lease or rent of land. When they lease their land, let's say, for instance, I want to go into mine and I need lands for the artisans, the informal way. Once they talk to their village head, he give them the land. And some of this land, you pay back lease or rent. So in a way, the community say they generate. More. And to look at it from, um, from the financial part of, point of view, a lot of it can produce 10 to 50 kilogram bags. I'll try to use an average figure here. And now the price of tin, despite the, the, the fall in the price of tin, the artisans sell their own, uh, there's this thing they call, they, this their own a, a kilogram for like, they sell for 4,000, 4,000 Naira now. And this 4,000, if you're getting 10 to 50 kilograms per week, and then, and this 10 to 50 kilogram, using 4,000 to multiply by 10 or multiply by the 50 kilogram, and this will be shared among five to 10 people. This 50 kilogram, by the time they sell it, they are sure of getting 200 to 300,000 Naira. If this 200,000 or 300,000 is shared among five to 10 people, then comparing the amount you get in a week from this business to what's the minimum wage in Nigeria, the price of a, a dollar now to Naira, then you know these people are in business and then they are getting from it. And on the national level, the export of this mineral has increased foreign exchange in Nigeria. The income of the middlemen has also increased. Like I said, the, the way the tin mining is being run on the plateau now, that is, now that is in the hand of Asisam, there are people who, they, they are not into the mining of the mineral. Once this informal miners mine. They are middlemen to tell other people that we have a um, team here, they have team material, are you interested? So uh, you get your cut. Then the processors, they are smelters, they are tin sheets that they help boost, they help smelt and purify the mineral. Get them and then there are those that they are importing. All they do is that once the mineral has been refined or smelted, they buy and import. They too, they get. And the marketers, the ones that what they do is that they help market to other states. So it's like a network of business, and everybody is making it economically. Uh, during this rainy season, some of the, the, the mine ponds will overflow. And on an average, you can get six to 10 deaths per year, resulting from injuries related that is mining, uh, mining related. And some of these are not even reported. Thank <laughs> you.
Yes, here is a mining pond. A mining pond can be can be as big as a community. But right now that there's rain in some of this mining pond overflow, and it can even be interconnected. Can even be interconnected, like in this slide now. Next slide. Okay, the previous slide. Like in this slide now, it is very easy for you to see some of the, the mine ponds. Some of the, the, the mine pond being connected, you get one mine pond in, the, in, in one side, and then as you move forward, you see another one. Yes, having looked at all this, we're going to look at the, the present situation of things in Plateau State now. If you look at the, the present, the tin mining is still a profitable venture. Like I tell people, I said, the fact that you don't, you are not with these people on the field, you hear people say, no, they are mining the grades, their mining is very low. But by the time you work with these people for one week, you understand that tin mining is still profitable. It's just the way they are carried. If, if this mining is carried out formally, the way it's sustainably, then the state or the federal government will get its caught out of it. Despite the scar, mining is still not sustainably done in just. There's, and de not, not just that it is not sustainable, sustainably done. There are no concrete, there are no concrete, um, no concrete, there are no concrete plan to even salvage the situation. There is no uh, supervision in the part of the government. And when I even probe for that, I was told that they don't even have the competent hands. If you go to some ministry, you see how many people are even those qualified to go for this supervision. There are no mining engineers. There are no, there are the numbers of mining engineers you get in ministry, you know, definitely cannot take care of the whole state. And there are no inadequate, there are inadequate research to take care of some of these issues. Inadequate sustainable mining and then, in fact, the methods of mining and exploration even the formal miners, the formal uh, companies use is still not the way it should be, even for those that understand that it shouldn't be this way. And the 1946 Act, which included the environmental protection and the regulation of mining, failed to protect the environment. And corruption, like every other place, is affecting the state. Where a, a, a company will tell you, I have finished my work, and then I reclaim. You go to that site, you saw that this place is not reclaimed. And there's no proper monitoring or evaluation to ensure. And like anywhere all these things is common, definitely poverty, poverty lingers. And the case of Plateau State is not, is not left out. Now, looking at the way forward, I haven't said all this. An environmental audit should be carried out as the first step of restoration. It is not okay to say there was an environmental audit last year. No, it should be on a on a, on a regular basis. Where we know, like I was telling a story of a site I went to in Rayfield for people that know Dura very well. So when I went to that site, the next time I went after three weeks, they told me that the my, the artists, the informal miners are no longer there. That they found a new land with which they feel is more fertile. So I went there, I got the address and I traced them there. I saw it was just an open land. They are about to open it. So while I was discussing with them, I asked them whose land is this. They told me the land belongs to a woman who feel the land is fatal, they should go ahead with their work on it. So I asked them, okay, what happened at the end? Is the government aware? The government is not aware. So what do people do? They said it is just between them and the woman. So at the end, they, got, they give certain percentage of what they get or money to this woman. So I feel the government needs to do environmental because every day in Plateau, the holes are being dug. And then nobody is responsible for the for the reclamation of this hole. It is not okay for the ones that have been done. Moving forward, we need to do more. And all stakeholders, the solid mineral sector, the environment, the agriculture, the tourists, and even the traditional rulers need to do more. We need to come together. Let's evaluate the extent of the existing problem and provide a collective solution. This problem was caused by the mining sector. But believe me, the impact is not just on the mining sector. It is on everybody living on the plateau. Then need to do more as in people need to be trained even the 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 technical people those land to. And there's a need for continuous dialogue and education of all concerned with exploration and exploitation of the mineral. Emphasis should be placed on enforcing the relevant laws guiding these minerals. Stringent action must be put to play because some people are not ready to be responsible. There are times when you, if you don't make people responsible, sometimes they will not. So if this stringent
need more hands. They need more mining engineers. They need more minerals engineers. They need more geology. They need more people that really understand. of the practitioners in mind and in your should look in mining in plateau state now moving forward in conclusion tin is an exciting metal with significant value potentially in a global market tin has historically been a steady performer in a number of markets and this will continue <laughs> even in the future the anticipated future outlook for tin value on a global scale appeared very positive. It is one of the so-called meta important for future technologies. In the long term, demand for tin is expected to benefit from the new market like the electric vehicle, the electrical infrastructure, as well as the 5G mobiles and related technologies. But for us in Plateau State to benefit from all this, there's a need for all of us, all relevant government stakeholders, NGOs and host communities to join forces in advocating as well as let's carry out proper and sustainable tin mining. I think at this junction, I would like to put a halt to my presentation and I would like to say thank you very much for lending me your attention.